I believe now that uh, we can uh, proceed. Uh, we're joined uh, by Mr. Mejia, the CLA's office, Ms. Rosales with the city clerk's office, and a uh, representative of the city attorney's office who could, oh, Ms. Corsani, yes, welcome. Uh, um, uh, we'll begin this meeting with uh, instructions for public comment to be read in the record by our city clerk. Appellants and or the representatives and applicants and or the representatives will be allowed to speak for a total of three minutes per side unless otherwise noted by the chair. Members of the public wishing to speak on one agenda item only shall have an opportunity to speak for one minute. Appellants and applicants will be given an opportunity to speak when their item is called. Each appellant and applicant has a total of three minutes to speak. An appellant can choose to have a single representative speak on his or her behalf or divide the three minutes among his or her team. Anyone else, including an attorney or project manager wishing to speak on an appellant's behalf who does not do so during this three-minute period, may offer a minute of public comment whenever the committee chairperson opens the public comment period for the meeting, which is usually at the beginning of the meeting. Therefore, we expect that appellants and applicants have the respective teams assembled and ready to present at the appropriate times today. Members of the public wishing to speak on more than one item shall state that and shall be allowed to speak for a total of two minutes. Failure to submit public comment in a timely manner before the comment period for the item ends results in forfeiture of the opportunity to participate in public comment for the item. Madam City Attorney. Adrian Corisani, City Attorney's Office. When speaking on the agenda items, you must be on topic. Our goal is to get through as many speakers as we can. If you are not speaking on topic, or if we cannot tell whether you're speaking on an agenda item, you will get one brief warning. If you do not immediately and clearly get on topic, or if you stray off topic, you will forfeit the rest of your time, and we will move on to the next speaker. We will inform you when your time is up. All right. Uh, so we have uh, right now on the Q770 speakers. Uh, I will uh, reiterate the line that uh, if you are part of a group and you all are making similar points, you might pick a couple representatives of the group. I know there's some students here who have to leave at a certain time, so we want to prioritize them. Uh, but uh, if we can uh, move as expeditiously, expeditiously uh, as possible, I know uh, Miss Hutt will get cranky if she starts, if she misses tip off of the Laker game. I'm just saying. So, <laughs> so uh, if you want favorable consideration, I'd suggest that uh, we move as quickly as we quickly as we possibly can. Uh, and I will uh, a lot based on the number of speakers. We have 70 minutes, seven zero minutes, uh, but hopefully we can get it done in less time than that. So we'll proceed with our first set of speakers. Herman, Herman, Donald Harlan. Council Member Harris Dawson, uh, Adrian Corisani, City Attorney's Office. Do we have any amendments or anything that we need? Yes, to sorry. Uh, are there any amendments from uh, council offices or uh, Department of City Planning, Mr. Gubaton? Yes, you can come to the desk right here. Can we, can we make his a live, his mic live? Okay. Uh, test Gerald Gubaton, Council District 14. We have amendments for item number four and item 11, and we've submitted written copies to the clerk for item number four, uh, amending, instruct the planning department in consultation with the city attorney to prepare the necessary documents for council action, to restore the zone to the MM1 form district to the sub area DTL-110 C, eliminate the Los Angeles River setback requirements and add the following footnote to the zone change matrix for subarea DTL-110C prepared for the downtown community plan update. Pending vested entitlement applications shall be reviewed against the downtown community plan in effect 
as of the date of vesting as consistent with vesting rights under the Los Angeles Municipal Code. And then secondly, in terms of item number 11, uh, we'd like to suggest an amendment to the Municipal Code 1320 to establish 2,500 square feet as the house size threshold to require site plan review for the Hillside Construction Regulation Supplemental Use District in the Northeast Los Angeles Community Plan area. Thank you. Thank you. So those have been moved and second. Any others from council offices or department of city planning? Yes, sir. Uh, Sean Silver from council office district 11. Uh, relating to item seven, we do have an amendment that we'd like to read into the record. Uh, a correction of, of great importance actually. The Arthur Lloyd and Gertrude Searcy Reese home is the correct and full name of the proposed HCM. The application had erroneously omitted the middle name Lloyd However, that is how he always referred to himself in his own notices, newspaper articles, documents, and personal correspondence. So we'd like to read that into the record. Thank, Thank you. you. It's been moved and seconded. One more. Have, um, this is uh, Helen Campbell, Planning Director for Council uh, District 1. We had an amendment for item number 8. Um, so after reviewing the record and extensively researching listening to all parties, uh, we move that uh, the designation of just the site be um, registered as a cultural historic monument and not the um, house itself. Thank you. Let's <laughs> move in a second. Any others? All right. Seeing no further amendments from council offices or Department of City Planning, we'll begin uh, public comment. Donald Harlan, Herman Herman, Golt WS, FMK, Adrian Fine. Please you state your name, your name and which items you are wish to speak on. When you hear your name, you can just line up on the side so you can be ready to go forward. I'd like to speak on all items and non-agenda public comment, please. How, how much is my time? To time? You have two minutes. Two minutes. So um, what is the Mills Act program? Well, it sounds like a corruptions of city attorneys like Thomas Peter. Then we go into item number, I believe it's, uh, okay. so I'll do I believe it's uh, regarding measure 64. How do we regulate cannabis? Well, first of all, you should never regulate cannabis when the taxpayers pass that measure 64, 42 SC 1983 politely, fuck you. Everyone deserves a piece of the pie in the American dream and selling dope on the streets is because you, elected officials, allowed it to happen because Sambo's up there agreed that it's okay. Then I go into item eight, night residents of Morris. Well, I like the group Morris, but Jim Morrison of the Doors is a better group. Now, as far as my uh, non-public agenda comment, your rules of decorum on items 7 and 12 are racist. And you Stalin-looking racist motherfuckers got to learn that we're not going to tolerate your disruptions when it's the public speaking. Remind you, Brandenburg versus Ohio is a case based on the Supreme Court ruling that this is not offensive. It is not hate speech. It is a symbol of what's going on in America today, a sign to remind the world of the Holocaust, of the homeless crisis we are all experiencing and seeing. And as long as you continue to build condominiums that are not worth our value to buy and live in. That's your time. Up. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Uh, I'd like, I'm Donald Harland. I'd like to speak on uh, agenda item number 2, 11, 12, 14. You have, you have two minutes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I noticed uh, a lot of the properties you guys have on the coming from the Plum Committee are no good. Uh, the city does not own these properties. For example, uh, 1300 West 6th Street, that's a nuisance property. 
Uh, somebody showed up in, uh, who's the original owner from 1975 or 1977? Do you know who that is? Do you know who that is? Not the person that's in there. Uh, agenda item number 10, for example, uh, Standard Oil Company, I know that was a spot that Pops and the King owned or whatever, but uh, um, these people trying to resell that property or name it a historical monument aren't in that family. Uh, uh, they aren't in, their, in the company. I own Standard Oil, I have for a while, uh, for quite a long while, maybe longer than some of you guys have been born, but that property, uh, you guys need to stop trying to claim oil properties. There's a big problem, people coming from the government, trying to get political favors, certain kinds of people attacking energy infrastructure. They want to attack oil properties. They're claiming that there's uh, these oil sediment settlements. They don't know who owns the oil company. You don't know who owns the oil company. Uh, they're in there uh, burning the infrastructure, trying to auction it, you know? Uh, uh, for example, number 14, Bright Star Schools. Uh, you need to stop building schools illegally on my real estate too, and you guys need to really be careful with those star properties, the, my properties that are marked stars. We already have um, people running over the Sheriff's Academy in one of the star academies, and then another one, there's a mass shooting in Monterey and another star property. Uh, I wish you guys would stop doing stuff with the star properties. I mean, uh, whoever is doing that needs to really be stopped. That's your time. Thank you. Next speaker. Sorry to scare kids like that. Hi, I'm here to speak about items 8, 9, and 10. Two minutes. Okay. Um, these three items are iconic landmarks in Los Angeles, and they're all threatened. Morris Kites headquarters, Eagle Rock's Route 66 Standard Station, and Pacific Dining Car. Um, I am a constituent, and I just wanted to support landmark designation of these three items. Uh, I hope that you'll vote yes to make this a protected, to make each one of them a protected HCM. In general, I'm concerned about the demolition, illegal or legal, of landmarks and buildings that I've grown up with here as an LA native. And um, so I'm just here to represent a lot of other people who couldn't be here today. And I'm fine with the meeting running late for what was uncovered and discussed in the last meeting. I love Los Angeles and I hope I can keep living here. And we, you know, we want to protect the buildings that are already here. And I saw someone with a shirt from the last meeting that said, um, housing is more important than luxury hotels. So I'm just here to um, speak my mind and let you guys know and hopefully you'll vote yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Next speaker. Good afternoon, commissioners and council members. I'm Adrian Scott Fine with the Los Angeles Conservancy. I'm here to speak on items eight and nine. We're speaking in support on item eight for in support of the Morris Kite Residence Historic Cultural Monument. The LGBTQ plus rights, civil rights movement is ongoing, but we can point to people, places, and gay spaces where it got its start. And we need to acknowledge them, and not just through a footnote and plaque, but the actual place and building in which it happened. Morris Kite is considered one of the founding fathers of the American LGBTQ plus civil rights movement. This modest bungalow helped form the backdrop to his work as an activist and gay rights pioneer. Amending the scope and designating the Morris Kite residence as a site of only, with demolition likely of the house, only negates the role of LGBTQ plus civil rights in Los Angeles and marginalizes the role of early leaders to attain equal rights then and now. Please support this nomination in whole and reject the proposed amendment. I'm also speaking on item nine for the Pacific Dining Car Historic Cultural Monument and legendary LA legacy business. 
The Pacific Dining Car is a beloved community institution inextricably tied to the physical location and grouping of buildings. The restaurant's nearly 100 year history should be recognized and the historic cultural monument scope expanded to include the full boundaries of the property's parcel. Please support this nomination and amend the historic cultural monument nomination to include the full site and all of the buildings representing the Pacific Dining Car history. Thank you. Thank you. Lindsay Mulcahy, Michael Shieldstone, Amy Tremillo, Alexandra Cruz, Alex DeGood, Alma Martinez. As you approach the mic, please state your name and which items you're speaking on. Uh, hi, good afternoon, council members. Uh, I'm actually representing the, the owner on item number nine, so I'll be speaking during that consideration. Okay. Thank you. If you are an appellant or an applicant, appellant or an applicant, you'll wait until your item is called and then you'll uh, be called up to speak then. Good afternoon. My name is Lindsay Mulcahy with the Los Angeles Conservancy speaking on items number seven and ten. Uh, the Arthur Lloyd and Gertrude Searcy Reese home uh, nomination is the work of community members, including a descendant of the Reese family, to uplift the history of a family that shaped the Oakwood neighborhood and all of Venice. The home reveals a long legacy of resistance to racist <coughs> housing practices, as well as ingenuity and solidarity that created a hub of black community that has existed in Venice for over a century. We ask that you support this historic cultural monument nomination. I'm also here in support of the JRIS uh, service station, which is another community led effort to recognize LA's oldest gas station <coughs> located along Route 66. It's a crucial piece of the story that tells the history of Eagle Rock's development. We ask for your support on both of these nominations and thank all the community members uh, who have worked to put them forth, including Citizens Preserving Venice. Sonia Greenland, and the Eagle Rock Historical Society. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello? Yes. Hi. You probably want to pull the mic down. There you um, go. There. Hi. Hi, my name is Alma Martinez, and I would like to talk about item number 14. Um, as you can see, it's a school. Um, we want a school for our- uh, Let me stop you, Ms. Yeah. Martinez. Maybe you want to have everybody stand who's with you, because uh -huh. I see a lot of these great shirts. There we go. Yeah. All right, Thank there you. we are. Okay, so uh, like I said, um, um, I'm here because we want a school for our kids. We need a permanent school. In the last four years, we've been to two different buildings, and the kids deserve a school, a stable school, a safe playground, classrooms, the teachers need parking, they're parking on the street. We need, we need our children to have a safe place they could call home. We've been in two different cities, from Arlita, back to Granada Hills, now we're back to Arlita again, and we need a school for our children. They deserve better. They, they need to have a place where they could call home, feel safe, and this is why we are here, because we want um, a school for our children. Please. Um, deny, deny any um, objections, um, which is really one. I'm sorry, I'm not prepared. <laughs> I'm Thank just you. You're doing great. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Anahi Castro, Anayeli Rios, Angelina Calderon, April Joy Devera, Benjamin. Hanalin and Bill Delvec. Speaker, please state your name and which items you're speaking on. Hello, my name is Amy Tremillo, and I'm here with the number, uh, item 14 uh, with the bright stoop. We're presenting here for my daughters. Um, <clears throat> we would like to, um, you guys as moms and parents, for you guys to understand the importance of this and what we're trying to do here. I currently have a kindergarten teacher Ms. Cabrera here. Um, this school has been the greatest school ever. Um, by the time the new school will be, you know, doing the project, I will have my, my little second daughter going there too. 
Um, again, the school is the best that has ever happened to my, to one of my daughters, and I expect the rest for my second daughter. I really wish I had uh, an education like that. Unfortunately, it wasn't that, but you know that's what we're here for. Thank, Thank you. you. Good afternoon, Honorable Council Members Benjamin Hanlon of Latham and Watkins on item number four. Uh, we support the amended motion. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Council Members Bill Dalvac, I represent the owner of the 4th Street uh, house that's nominated, and I'd ask to speak when item eight is called up. Thank you. Thank you. Please remember. Hello, my name is Angelina Calderon. I'm here on behalf of Bright Star Schools and Valor Academy Elementary on item 14, asking the Plum Committee to please deny the appeals and approve a permanent safe new facility for our students. We have over 100 people here today and I have almost 200 signatures from the community as well that I'd like to submit to you all. We have the support to be able to uh, build a great, beautiful new location for our students that deserve a safe space to grow and learn. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is April Joy Devera and I'm speaking on item number 14 on behalf of Bright Star Schools and Valor um, Academy Elementary School. Um, as a teacher at VASE, I believe that we need this building at our new site because our students do deserve better and because our teachers need the resources in order to give our students a better education. We um, value um, responsibility, respect, perseverance, and we know that our students can do and be the best versions of our, themselves when they have everything they need to succeed. Um, we love our students. We have a great community. We are striving to making sure that we make this a better world and we need um, the resources and equipment available for our students because they do deserve the best. Thank you. Thank you. Blake Farigo. Brenda Ale, Bruner Jerry, Candace Williams, Carrie Chasteen, Charles Johnson, and Charles Singleton. Please state your name and which items you're speaking on. Hey, uh, I'm Blake Farrago. Uh, so, First off, I want to say I actually respect each and every one of you for the position you hold. It takes a great amount of patience to You, might, you might want to get a little closer to the microphone. I apologize. I have a rather soft voice. Anyways, first off, I just want to say I respect each and every one of you for the position you hold. It takes a great amount of patience to run a council. Anyways, what I have is less of a comment, more of a request. I am a young entrepreneur. I'm, I'm a veteran and, well, I have a percentage of native in my blood, and I have a concept of an art installation actually regarding a marijuana bonsai, and it is going to require a significant acreage of land, and by significant I mean about nine square miles and some air, like height, yeah. It's, what I'm saying is it will create a good amount of revenue, and I would like you to consider. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon, Carrie Chasteen, Safos Environmental. I'm here on behalf of the owner for item number eight. However, I would like to defer my time to Mr. Delvac, but I am available should you have questions. Thank you. And on item, item number eight, are you the applicant? Are you representing the applicant? The owner. Okay, thank you. Next speaker, please. Hello, I'm Charles Johnson, and I'm appellant on the uh, 14. Unlike the, the, the Valor School, they have a, a lot of students here. P pardon me, can you tell me your name again? It's Charles Johnson. Johnson, okay. Yes. Okay. 
Are, 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 you there, are you the appellant for this? Are you the appellant? Director? I'm the appellant, yes. Okay, so we're going to call you when we come to this item. Okay, and you're going to get more time. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll call you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next speaker, please. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Brenda Alay. I'm Brenda Alay. Y vengo a representar. Un momento, we have translation. Okay. Sí, comience de nuevo. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Brenda Alay. Good afternoon. My Brenda is Alay. My name is Brenda Alay. Vengo a representar a Valor School. I'm here to represent Valor School. Nosotros necesitamos una escuela. We need a school. Porque es la escuela que a mí me ha dado más apoyo con mi hijo. Because that's the school that has given me the most support with my child. Mi, tengo un hijo especial. I have a kid with special needs. Y por eso necesitamos esa escuela. And that's why we need the school. Tene, para tener una escuela más fija. To no have a fixed school. No nos estemos moviendo de so we, un lado a otro. So we don't have to move around from one place to another. Espero que mis palabras sean escuchadas. I hope my words are heard. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you, speaker. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Jerry Bruner. Uh, I'm representing 12, my friend Charles Williams. Uh, I think it would be uh, a disservice <coughs> to the community. Excuse me. I think it would be a disservice to the community if the city would take his property away from him. Uh, he has a clean record for over 30 years in the neighborhood. And I think it would be an injustice to the black community to take this establishment for him. Thank you. My name is Candace Williams. I'm speaking on item number 12. Um, Mr. Charles Williams, Magic Carpet Motor Inn. He's an Army veteran, um, United States military, a member of the community, and has had the said business for 30 something years, which is a family owned and ran business. I was present when Officer Tyson Hamioka had the meeting with Mr. Williams at Magic Carpet. And what was discussed was for Mr. Williams to provide better lighting and better camera surveillance equipment, and Mr. Williams did comply with both. What Mr. Williams stated at the time this was that he would not provide a full-time 24-7 security guard for the premises because it was too costly. Um, and later on, Officer Tyson Hamioka wanted the password and information to the security system to provide to the patrol officers so they could log in at random from their patrol calls. Mr. Williams denied that personal information for multiple officers to have personal login and password information. And Thank that's you, Speaker. That's your time. Thank you. Conley Idol, Danny Hawkins, Drew Golden, Dustin Go, Dennis E. Boyd Sr., Diane Ferreira, Dion Longino. Please state your name and which items you're speaking on. My name is Charles Singleton, and I'm speaking on item 12, the Magic Carpet Inn. I'm an employee at the Magic Carpet Inn, and every employee at the Magic Carpet Inn speaks and does everything with pride and, and security. We have a clean place of employment. We treat everybody with respect, and we have security with every employee at the Magic Carpet. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hi, my name is Dustin Goh. I'm speaking on item number 10. Um, I am the representative of the owners of 1659 West Colorado Boulevard. As the J Risk Standard Oils Company service stations structure along Route 66 holds, and main, holds the main historical significance of the site, we request that the Planning and Land Use Management Committee reconsider 
the historic designation of the underlying property. The owners intend to move the structure to a new location while adhering to all federal and historical guidelines, ensuring its preservation and adaptive reuse. However, once the historic monument is relocated, the underlying property or the adjacent buildings and property no longer holds the same historical value and should not be subject to any restrictions or future historic CEQA reviews. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. My name is Conley Idol. I'm speaking on item nine, the preservation of Pacific Dining Car, my family's century-old landmark restaurant. Please preserve the whole building so that it may be restored and reopened as a historically run business, providing an iconic cultural LA experience for generations to come. There are investors passionate about this project. We're so grateful for the thousands who express their support with regular visits to our site, social pages, and via phone and email, and for the nearly 700 people who submitted letters to the CHC and council file online. We know there's housing crunch in LA. One compromise could be to put apartments on top of the landmark building. If you ignore last October's amendment and the LA Conservancy's recommendation to consider the entire life of the building through 2020 as culturally significant, if you protect only the original dining room, a developer can make it into a lobby or Starbucks. The history will be lost. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hello, council members. My name is Dennis E. Boyd, Sr. Uh, I'm an Army veteran. I'm going to open up my statement with the boy who cried wolf. Now, I'm sure all of us know the story. The story of the boy runs into the forest. I'm talking on um, 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 item number 12, Mr. Williams and the motor in. Um, I'm sure all of us know the story. A boy runs into the woods and screams, wolf, wolf, wolf. The town people come running. There's no wolf. The boy starts laughing. There's no wolf. There's no wolf in the forest. The magic carpet motor inn is not the forest. The forest is on Figueroa, the corridor of Figueroa. Young sisters, young mothers, young daughters walk around in a clad, um, slightly clad clothing in the cold weather. Law enforcement seeing it and nothing being done, but yet you're being harassed, the motor end is being harassed because of a wolf that's not there. Thank you. Thank you, speaker. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon, council members. My name is Drew Golden. I'm a native Angelino, and I'm here on item nine for the complete and total preservation of the Pacific Dining Car Restaurant. The dining car represents the DNA of the city. It is the fabric of our genesis for the City of Angels. It is a safe haven for all those to come in from outside of the fray and represented a place for people to have safe harbor, peace, and everyone was accepted at that restaurant. I would build a case that it is the whole idea of historical preservation that the dining car would be preserved. And I thank you for the consideration. Thank you, Speaker. Douglas Wentz, Dylan Littlefield, Elisa Arroyo, Esther Sandoval, Fran G, Frank Gallo, and Frank Perello. Yes. Longino. I'm here to speak on item 12 regarding the Magic Carpet Motor Inn. Um, I've been there for the past three years. I'm homeless, um, and Mr. William has been very good to me, my kids, my grandson. Um, my grandson is a year old. I raised him there. Um, if you take that away from him, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like I said, he is the only one that's that's been there for my family. Um, and. I would hate to see him lose it. Thank you. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Dayan Ferreira. Soy madre de Good afternoon. Señora, puede hablar en frases cortas y luego le voy a interpretar. Oh. Puede empezar desde nuevo. OK. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Dayan Ferreira. Good afternoon. Soy... My name is Dayan Ferreira. Soy madre de familia y yo solamente hablo por la 
14 y solo podemos hablar cosas positivas que ha brindado la escuela a mi familia. I would like to speak about item number 14. I'm a mother and I would like to speak about my uh, the school. Ha formado buenos niños y sobre todo buenos estudiantes. The school estudiantes. has been able to bring about good students and uh, well-learned uh, children. Estudiantes que tendrán un gran futuro, apoyen nuestra nueva escuela, por favor. Los niños son el futuro de todos y merecen mejores recursos. Tengo uh, unos niños en high school, desde, bueno, desde elemental hasta high school. I would like yes. for you to please uh, support this item so that the, because students are our future and we, this, student, this school is able to bring about well-educated and students that are prepared for the future. I do have some children that are also in high school. Y es una excelente escuela. Gracias. And it is an excellent school. Thank you. Thank you, speaker. Next speaker, please. Please state your name and which items you're speaking on. Hi, my name's Alyssa Arroyo. I'm speaking on behalf of item 14, on behalf of Bright Star Schools. I'm a founding teacher at Valor Academy Elementary, and I ask for your support to build a permanent facility for our school. We've grown and fostered a strong and beautiful community and con to, continu to continue the things that are happening at our school, we deserve a permanent space. And I'm here to speak on behalf of the students that I've served over the last seven years. And they deserve, they deserved and the current students deserve an adequate space for them to continue learning and growing. They deserve spacious classrooms and proper playground with grass and trees. And the impact wouldn't just be on these kids now or when the building is complete, but for lasting throughout the years of all the students that live in that community. So I would please, please ask you to please support um, our school. Thank you. Hello, my name is Father Dylan Littlefield. I'm speaking on number eight, the Morris Kite House. Uh, site only designation falls short of the honor due Morris Kite. Uh, Morris Kite is the reason that so many gay and lesbian people in this city can feel safe and across the country. Uh, it is the reason that I'm here today. It is the reason that I haven't been assaulted, to beat up, uh, bullied over the years. Uh, it's Morris Kite is the person that made all of that possible. The erosion of gay and lesbian rights across the country uh, is ongoing, and I don't think that the honor or that Morris Kite would be honored by LA being a part of that. LGBTQ people in Los Angeles need a space to feel and be safe. Uh, they don't need a plaque. I urge the commission to uh, vote in favor of an entire designation, not just site only. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Uh, my name is Frank Perello. I'm with the Eagle Rock Valley Historical Society. Uh, David Dellinger, our president, uh, is out of town because he had already left for a vacation in Denmark uh, when it was put on the agenda. So I will be speaking as the applicant on item number Thank 10. you. If you're the applicant, we'll call you on yes. that time. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Here for um, unit number 12. My name is Esther Sandoval, and I'm here on behalf of Magic Carpet. I've been with this company for 30 years. 30 years plus, Mr. William has worked so hard to keep us in a decent place for all of our families, and it's not fair the way I think he's being treated, harassed by all these police coming in the middle of the night, harassing our customers, putting light in their vehicles, light in their face, putting them to the side, searching them and their car without no apparent reason. If they want to do their job, clean up Figueroa. The problem has been there for years. We do not have that problem here in Century, and it's unfair. He's a black owner for the motel in a big area, and I find this racist. I don't find it right. I don't find it unfair. And it all began with one officer, Tyson Hamaiken, if I'm not mistaken. He's not happy with us, it's fine, but we're not doing nothing wrong, nothing illegal, no tickets. Please take your time and hear us out. It's not fair for them. Thank you, speaker. Next speaker, please. Frank Gallo, Rancho Cold Storage. Uh, I just wanna support, say we support the amendment that was made to item four, thank you. Frank Weiser, Gary Willis, Gerardo Ramirez, Gilbert Torres, 
Grisel Gillian, Heather Garnica, and Helene Spock. Please state your name and which items you're speaking on. Good morning, good afternoon. My name is Gary Willis. I'm on behalf of Mr. Williams on item 12. I'm also an employee, I'm <coughs> also a night management. Uh, the accusation that's going on that, uh, that our businesses uh, contribute to crime and uh, a lot of other mishaps is uh, totally, uh, totally outrageous. And a lot of things that could be done to make things better is more patrolling on the streets to where the crimes are actually happening and not pointing the finger at where it's not happening. Can't be responsible for people. People, places, and things we don't have no control over. So all we asking is for a chance to do better for our family, which he have provided for all of us. So we ask him for him to continue to provide for us and we provide for this community. Because everybody need a place to go when it get cold. Thank you. Thank you, speaker. Next speaker, please. Hello, my name is Heather Garnica, and I am here to speak on behalf of item number 14. I am a teacher at Valor Academy Elementary School, and I am here to support our uh, school having a new campus. Currently, we have a space that is working, but our students deserve much better. They deserve a playground, they deserve a cafeteria, and they deserve an art classroom that is not split with a teacher's lounge. Um, thank you so much, all of you, for being here today and for hearing us out. And I ask that all of you support our new school. Thank you so much. Thank you, speaker. Next speaker, please. Hello, my name is Gilbert, speaking on item number 12. I'm a neighbor to the Motel Magic Carpet Motor Inn. I live actually a few houses away. I often go to the motel a few times a week to purchase snacks from the vending machine with my three small children. Never once have I seen any loitering in front of the motel or inside the motel's parking lot. Um, my kids actually like their walks to the motel just because the staff is always really nice and especially around the holidays. They like how festive they are around Christmas and, and Halloween. They're, they get really into the spirit. and. Um, I've worked in the security industry for over 15 years and I've been trained to be extra um, vigilant and never once noticed anything illegal or felt dan danger in the hotel while there. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hi, good evening. My name is Grisel Guillen, and I'm here in support of Valor Academy Elementary School, speaking on item 14. Um, and more importantly, in support and speaking on behalf of the children that cannot be here to speak uh, on this podium today. <clears throat> um, I'm asking for approval of the construction of the school's building and to benefit our children, our families, and our community. Um, I really think that the children, like everyone has said, deserve not only safe equipment, safe playground, a safe space to um, learn, but they also just need uh, a communal space for to grow with each other, create um, memories, and just have a permanent location that they can call their own. No more, um, you know, the kids, the kids write and talk about there's this new school all the time and they tell us we're going to take care of it we promise to take care of it and we just Thank are you, here speaker. for that's your time <laughs> next speaker please uh good afternoon my name is helene spock i'm with the glassell park oh i'm speaking on item number 11. Um, Helene Schmack, Glassell Park Improvement Association, speaking for the board and our membership. I've been working in partnership with uh, Pat uh, Winters from the Mount Washington Homeowners Alliance and their 450 
homes in that area. In support of the HCR for over two, three years now, we've been engaging our communities, discussing about it. It has received overwhelming support. Two things, the provision about signage on site in the public right of way we feel is very important to inform the, and educate the community and to give the contacts for city entities so that uh, it would support enforcement. We also had originally from our research on the average size home, the median and average size home that we had done over all the filings over two years had said 4,000 square feet, but we will accept the amendment from uh, Council District 14 to move that to 2,500 square feet as the threshold for the site plan review. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Jackson Lips, James Priest, Javier Meyer Borrani, Jennifer Ahn, Jana Sanchez, Jill Akahushi, Joanne Avalos, Joseph Gonzalez, Joshua White. Please state your name and which items you're speaking on. Hello, how is everyone? Um, I am speaking on item number nine. Um, my name is Jackson Lips, and I'm a partner in Boulevard Hospitality Group. Uh, I am in charge of business development for our company. There has been a lot of talk of fake investors, um, and it's simply not true, and that's the reason I'm here today. Well, one of the reasons. Um, I currently own, well, me and my partners currently own and operate TCL Chinese Man Theater and Yamashiro amongst 12 other uh, venues in Los Angeles County. Both of those are both historical landmarks and have been for a very, very long time. Um, I'm four generations Los Angeles. My grandfather, my father, and I have dined at the uh, Pacific Dining Car many of times. Uh, we have been in talks with Wesley Idol uh, in partnering and purchasing of the property long before this, and we are very still interested. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Next speaker, please. Hi, my name is Joanne Avalos, and I'm speaking on item number nine. I've been going to the Pacific Dining Car for over 20 years. Its classic and iconic design is much to be desired in a big city where everywhere you turn, you see mediocre chain restaurants. <coughs> Pacific Dining Car had the best food and service bar none. This unique establishment in Los Angeles is over 100 years old and should be preserved and protected. True history in Los Angeles is important. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Next speaker, please. Um, my name is Jill Akahoshi, and I'm commenting on item number 14. Um, this is not to say don't give the children their school. This is more about slowing things down um, because the determination that city planning approved uh, with the risks and dangers were not carefully considered uh, or mitigated. Um, they need, the city needs to slow down and examine the issues raised. Uh, I realize that the applicant paid for expedited processing, but I think that after looking at all the concerns listed in the two appeals, everyone, city council, city planning, Bright Star parents, students, and residents will want to take the time to carefully consider each issue brought up and conduct a full EIR for the site and reevaluate the site plan and the conditional use permit. Um, the excitement of a new school is, is great, but nobody who's responsible for making these types of decisions as to the safety environmentally for the residents, for the students, and for the kids, nobody wants to be responsible Thank if something you, speaker. goes wrong. Thank you, Speaker. That's your time. Thank you. Next speaker. Good afternoon. My name is Jennifer Ahn. I'm a second grade teacher at Valor Academy Elementary School. I've worked there two years, and it's cozy right now where we're at, but we're making it work, and I can't even imagine what we do in our new school site. I'm here asking that you deny the appeals uh, against our school and that you allow our new school to be built so that our kids can have resources like a playground, an art room, a STEM lab. The possibilities are endless. Thank you so much for your time. Hello, my name is Javier Mayer Borrani. I am the president of the Los Angeles River and Artists Business Association, and I also sit on the board of the Arts District Community Council Los Angeles. I'm here to speak on number four in support of item number four. Uh, I would like to say that the 
planning department has worked really hard to make sure that we conserve the height limits along the river for development. This is important for access to the river, but we also understand that there are mechanisms for property owners and developers to exceed those height limitations through variances and entitlements. Uh, what those mechanisms do is that they make sure that projects end up becoming better projects for the community. So we would like to support a height limitation along the river and understand that better projects will come about through these mechanisms available. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hello, my name is Joshua White. I'm here in support of item number nine, the historical designation for the Pacific Dining Car. I represent a group of investors interested in purchasing the entire Pacific Dining Car property and restoring it to its original glory. We toured the property in January 2022 and are committed to bringing it back to its original luster. Some of the other supporting members of our group include world-renowned architect Frank Gehry, film director Francis Coppola, and the president of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences in Los Angeles. This historic, historic designation is imperative for our plans to bring back the, for future generations of Angelinos to enjoy the Pacific Dining Car. Pacific, Pacific Dining Car is without question one of the most important historic restaurants within the fabric of the city of Los Angeles, and we urge the council to, des to designate it as a historical site to ensure it is preserved for the next 100 years. I trust the city council will decide wisely and designate the entire footprint of the Pacific Dining Car as a historic site so that we can continue our plans for purchase and complete restoration of this historic jewel in our wonderful city of Los Angeles. Thank you, Speaker. That's your time. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon. My name is James Priest. I came to talk about number nine. I'd like to offer a personal story. I came to Los Angeles in 1997, a single father of two who was struggling. I heard about the Pacific Dining Car. I understood that it was a fancy steakhouse. I got invited there by a friend who assured me that I didn't need a coat and tie to be there, which was good because I didn't own a coat or a tie. When I got to the Pacific Dining Car, I understood very quickly that if I had the money to buy a cup of coffee, well, right this way, sir, I was uh, struck by the egalitarian nature of the joint then, and I have driven by many times and gone there many times in the years since. Uh, Pacific Dining Car represents the community to me. I hope that the council will take into consideration these, dare I say it, spiritual aspects of having a home and a landmark in the city of Los Angeles. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Laura Velke, Lilia Martinez, Lilia Prado, Linda Cruz, Maria Garibay, Maria Marco. Please state your name and which items you're speaking on. Good afternoon, I'm Hannah Sanchez and I'm a student at Valor Academy High School. I am here to have item 14, supporting Valor Academy Elementary, hoping that the students get to have a permanent building and continue learning. Thank you. Thank you, speaker. <laughs> Next speaker, please. Good afternoon, my name is Laura Velke. I'm the managing chair of the ADCCLA La Robert Land Use Committee with my co-chair Mark Borman. I'm here to address item four, a report back from city planning with a recommendation to restore the MM form district designation for 670 Mesquite. We understand that CD14 has submitted an amendment which slightly amends the report back from planning and we support that change. We thank the council office for helping us reach an amicable solution and to the planning department for all their hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Buenas tardes. Miembros del Consejo, mi nombre es Maria Garibay. Good afternoon, um, council members. My name is Maria Garibay. La razón por la que yo estoy aquí es para hacer soporte a las escuelas Valor. Um, the reason I'm here is to support Valor schools. Como madre de un estudiante de Escuela Valor Elementary, 
As the mother of a student uh, at Valor Elementary, solo vengo a pedirles a consideración el permiso para poder construir nuestra escuela. I'm here for you guys to please consider giving us a permit for us to be able to make the construction necessary. Ya que no solo será beneficioso para mi hijo, sino para todos los niños de la comunidad de ahora y en un futuro. And it wouldn't just be at the benefit of my own children, but all of the community, all of the children, and future children. Es una escuela que tiene el enfoque en construir ciudadanos de calidad. This school focuses on uh, creating you know, good citizens of the city. Donde les fomentan los valores y el cuidado a su comunidad. Where we are enriching values and they're learning a sense of community. Solo espero que escuchen Estoy aquí para hablar por los derechos de mi hijo y el de los niños de la comunidad. And I just hope that you listen, that you're able to understand that these are the rights of my children and the children of the community. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you, speaker. Next speaker, please. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Lilia Prado. Hi, good evening. Eh, ¿Puede repetirse, por favor? Ah, sí, mi nombre es Lilia Prado. My name is Lilia Prado. Ah, estoy aquí para apoyar a las escuelas Valor. I'm here to support Valor Schools. Eh, tengo la experiencia de tener dos niños, en, ya uno graduado de high school y uno de middle school. Y ahora me gustaría tener una escuela en el punto 14 donde nos identificaría como escuela elementary. I have a, a high school graduate and a middle, middle school graduate, and I would like uh, the school to get to a point where it can be recognized, as en, in el lugar que, item 14, in the place que está that's allí, destined for us. Perfecto. It looks perfect. Me, me queda cerca de las otras escuelas, pues it, me it's tengo close que to the other schools. Y ese punto para I don't have to go out of the way. Y como lo dijo mi compañera, that's part, es that's una good for the community. And like sobre todos los valores y buenos my principios. companion said, it, it foments a good values and uh, good principles. Y pienso como padre, eso es lo que siempre estamos peleando o abogando porque tengamos buenos hijos. And I think as parents, that's always what we're fighting for and always what we're asking for is to have uh, good kids. Muchas gracias, con permiso. Thank you very much, excuse me. Thank you, speaker. Gracias, oradora. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon. Buenas My tardes. name is Lilia Martinez. I'm talking, I'm, I'm talking about um, item number 14, Valor Academy. I'm asking, I'm, I'm please asking you guys so you guys can approve the new building so we, we our kids have a, a permanent building. We don't have to be moving out. Um, I have a really good experience. My son have, uh, it have helped him a lot at the school. They have a lot of programs. Um, and I'm asking you guys to please um, approve it so our kids have a better place. Um, they, have, uh, they can have uh, bigger spaces so they can have uh, more activities. Um, I'm asking you guys to please deny the appeal and approve our Valor um, Academy new building. Thank you, have a nice one. Thank you, speaker. Next speaker, please. Members of the Plum Committee, thank you for having this hearing. My name is Olivia Martinez, and I'm here to speak on behalf of agenda item 14. I'm a proud resident of Jefferson Park, which is in council member Heather Hutt's district. Uh, I'd like to give a special thank you to Ms. Hutt for sending out uh, uh, Representative Eric Aguilar to our block club meeting. You directly listen to the constituents of our neighborhood, and I can tell that you're really serving us, so I appreciate you. I would also like to thank uh, Council Member Monica Rodriguez for your continued support of schools and education. I am a former teacher and a former principal and a current head of schools at Bright Star Schools. In this role, I work with four of our schools, Valor Academy Elementary being one of them. I have the pleasure to be on the campus of Valor Academy Elementary uh, nearly every week. And when I step onto campus, there is a palpable sense of joy and community and connection between the teachers and the students and the students and the administrators. I'm a mother of two boys, soon to be a mother of three boys. And I know firsthand how important it is to have a school where you feel like your child is safe, secure, and nurtured. Thank you. Please support the project. 
Next speaker, please. Hi there, my name is Linda Cruz. I'm here for support in item 14. I believe that Valor Academy deserves half a school for our students. They so much want to have their area. Every day we go outside to take the students to have their lunch. They are sitting outside in the weather, exposed to all types of climates. When we do have inclement weather, they have to come back inside. They do not have any area to get out those extra energies. If we had a school, they would be able to go out into the cafeteria to have more space, take down tables, have the children play inside instead of inside a small classroom. So I really hope that y'all will let us have this building. Our children deserve it, our staff deserve it, and thank you. Thank you, speaker. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon, uh, council members. My name is Yuval Barzemer. Uh, I'm here to speak about item number four, council file 22-0617-S1. Um, I sit on a number of community organizations in the arts district, and I'm here to support the motion to restore uh, the designation of MM1 to a big parcel between the 6th Street and 7th Street along the river. It's important that we maintain a restriction on heights on development, future development along the LA River. And uh, we don't have an issue with uh, eliminating a required setbacks, but the issue of height is very important for us, and I'm here to ask you to support this motion. Thank you so much. Thank you, Speaker. Joseph Gonzalez, Joshua White, Juan Aguirre, Juanita Ducross. Hello, everyone. My name is Maria Marcos. I'm actually talking about um, Article 14. Um, I'm here just to tell you the school, Valor Academy, is not only thriving in a small location in Arlita, please. We need a permanent spot. They're already thriving in a small section. Imagine how much success they can create for our children in a bigger place. They already offer clubs, which is fantastic, but they deserve a decent cafeteria. They deserve to feel safe at a school that's permanent, where they don't have to worry whether they have to be changing locations every three, four years. That's not fair. Our children deserve something permanent, something that they're gonna be calling our home school. Please, please consider this. I'm only here because my children are the ones that are showing me how much the school is causing a difference on them. Just consider, consider. Not for any reason, where's, where's a, oh, there's a whole community right behind us. Thank you Thank for you your speaker. time. That's your time. <laughs> Next speaker, please. My name is Juanita DeCross, and I'm here on to speak on number 12, Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams has been a businessman for a long time, and I have known him for many years as nothing but a businessman. He's, the magic carpet is not a place for any kind of illegal activity, drugs, or anything like that. They shouldn't be, the policemen shouldn't be harassing Mr. Williams. They should be on Figueroa Street harassing those people. He's not doing anything illegal at the magic carpet. There's no kind of illegal activity going on, and it's just a nice business area. But uh, people that live in there, they're living there without any problems. They're living there in peace, and he's had a business that's going on, and he is just a black-owned business for the people that's in that area. And I think I'd appreciate that if you could just stop having him being harassed. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Speaker. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon. My name is Wesley Idle, and I'm here speaking on item number nine. I am the owner of the Pacific Dining Car business name and trademark. I am also the fourth generation who ran Pacific Dining Car for 20 years. My wish is that the whole restaurant be protected while still embracing the development of our city. Los Angeles, excuse me, Los Angelinos 
want Pacific Dynacar back. We welcome the developing this property that would give housing to LA and still maintain the complete Pacific dining car experience. If you only protect the original dining room, the restaurant is gone. If you protect the whole building, we can bring Pacific dining car back and happily work with the property owner to develop housing plans around and above the restaurant. We are very grateful that Council Member Hernandez and her staff want to preserve Pacific dining car experience as do investors who've toured the building. I thank you so much for your time and consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Next speaker, please. Mickey Jackson, Monica Hernandez, Natalie Wollaston, Nikki Sniper, Olivia Martinez. Please state your name and which items you're speaking on. Hi, my name is Natalie Wollaston and I am here for item 14. As a founding office manager, I am in support of the new building. I've been working with our families for seven years who have depended on our school for providing their students with a college-ready education, social-emotional learning, and a loving and supportive community that meets the needs of the whole child. We, work, we have worked so hard as a school to provide these students with an opportunity and experiences, but we need a permanent facility to support our goals. Our middle school and high school already have their permanent school. Our elementary school students need theirs too. These students need consistency, which is why we ask, deny the appeal, and approve our school's building. Thank you. Thank you, speaker. Next speaker, please. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Monica Hernandez. Good afternoon. My name is Monica Hernandez. Vengo aquí en nombre de mi nieto. I'm here on behalf of my grandson. Tengo cuatro hijos graduados de Valor Academy. I have four kids who graduated Valor Academy. Ha sido una escuela que les ha dado valores, la it's educación been a school que that has given them values and education that Son they need. buenos chicos. They're good kids. Um, es el futuro para los niños. It's the future for them. Por favor, les pido que aprueben la construcción para la escuela. I'm asking you to approve construction for the school. Por mi nieto y por todos los for demás niños que merecen un mejor futuro. For all of the kids who deserve a better future. Gracias. Thank you so Thank much. You. Gracias, senadora. We're going to do five more minutes of uh, public comment, so that should give us about five more speakers, and then we'll close. Uh, public comment and item eight. I'm a constituent of CD1. I voted for the current council member. I felt we needed change, and I am sad and disappointed in my member. There's a letter from uh, former member Cedillo in the record of this nomination, and it's, he, she has taken the exact position down to talking to us in the same words that the CDO letter has. And I'm very disappointed in that, and I'm very disappointed in being suddenly having a motion changed on us at the last minute, so I would hope we don't do that to people. I was at that house in the 70s. Yeah, I'm that old. And that house is not in much worse repair than it was then. It's been a house that was rented out to people in a long succession of, of owners who just don't keep it up much. It, it's a lot like the other houses in the neighborhood. And the other thing about this is when we talk to people, there's two houses being nominated. The one in Hollywood says, we don't, you don't need this, you've got 4th Street. The one in 4th Street says, you don't need this, you've got McCadden Place. Now, if they both had their way, we'd have nothing, which is what generally has happened to our community that had to stay so hidden and stay so secretive. And we don't have much. There's very little for this LGBTQ community to point at a place and say, that happened there. I sat on that front porch. It was very rickety then. You had to be careful where you leaned. And to lose the house, it, it, we have so little to point to. That is the house where most of the founding of this movement was of the foundation, such as the Gay Community Center, was done in 4th Street. 
And you know, what are we going to do about the fact that most poor people and working class people who have a movement will do so in a humble place because they don't have money? Thank you, Speaker. That means That's your it time. should go away. Next speaker, please. Monica Hernandez, Natalie w Wollaston, Patricia Doyle, Patricia Layton, Paul Saurez. When you approach the mic, please state your name and which items you're speaking on. Good afternoon, council persons. It's a real honor to rise uh, to speak regarding item number nine on the agenda, uh, specifically in favor of the HCM designation for the entire Pacific Dining Car premises, including expansion of the contemplated time frame of historical significance from 1921 to 2020. Um, I've been in Antileno for about 35 years, um, the last 21 of which I've been a proud LA Phil Disney Hall founding subscriber. Um, it's been such a treat to go to PDC before or after a concert and enjoy a scotch and a baseball steak in the back where one can not only enjoy the experience, the food, but the quiet, how quiet it is back there. That is all in jeopardy if the entire building is not preserved. This place was special way before Denzel and Ethan Hawke and Antoine Fuqua wonderfully popularized the restaurant in the movie Training Day. So I encourage um, the council's approval of the HCM for the entire building. Thank you for your time. Hello, my name is Patricia Layton. Thank you, council, for being here. I am here to ask you to deny the appeal and approve our school. I am also here today as a parent of three Valor Elementary School students and as a member of the community. I have a soon to be graduating fourth grader and my kindergarten twins. I have been a Valor parent for five years and I have seen firsthand the amazing teachers and administration that Valor gives our school every day. What we need now, what we need today is the approval of a structure. It's a very important building. It seems easy, doesn't it? Well, it is. Our kids are the future. This will support our teachers and our children in their learning and in their teaching. I have met and spoken most to most Valor staff, and I know they love our children as much as we do, and they will undoubtedly prosper with the approval of this location. Thank you. Thank you, All right. Speaker. Thank you so much. Uh, we've done uh, well in excess of our 70 minutes in uh, public comment. So we'll close and we'll ask uh, the gentleman in the g green shirt to sit down and stop interrupting the meeting. This is your first warning. All right. Um, so, uh, we have first up, uh, Mr. Mejia, item number eight, which there is a uh, request to continue. Um, so if we need to call roll on that, yes. we will do so. Uh, so. Request to continue to a date to be determined. No. So for item eight, Councilman, uh, the action of the committee will be to approve a 15-day time extension. Got which it. Which needs to be adopted by the council. So it will be transmitted to the council in the form of the committee report. And it's, uh, this, is something, this is allowed by the administrative code. Section 221711F. Uh, I will call the roll on that item. Um, Mr. Harris Dawson. Yes. Ms. Rodriguez. Yes. Ms. Jaroslavsky. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Lee. Aye. Ms. Hutt. Aye. That's uh, five members and that's unanimous. Thank you so much. That takes us to item number three. Yes. Good item number three. Item three, sir, is a report from city planning in a resolution, McCosker Harris Dawson and it's recommending the extension of the trucking related uses interim control ordinance for a period of one year. Excellent. So uh, I'm going to recommend that we adopt this uh, recommendation and we'll hear from uh, Department of City Planning and our representative from Council District 15, the one and only Mr. Tim McCosker. 
Thank you very much, uh, uh, colleagues, uh, chair, and members. Um, I'm here with Pamela Thornton, my, um, my planning director. And I just want to thank you for this consideration. Um, as you know, uh, we have a, a, an existing ICO in the, Har in the Wilmington Harbor City area. And um, this is our opportunity to extend it for one year. It is of great importance uh, to me and to the district um, if you were to drive through Harbor City and, and uh, Wilmington today, you would see that we have a great number of uses that are, exist today that are um, outside storage, uh, container, uh, container stacking, salvage, uh, uses that are incompatible with the, with the nearby residential uses. And so my predecessor and your body correctly put the ICO in place so that we could update the uh, Wilmington Harbor City Plan. I greatly appreciate that. Uh, we are nearing a completion of the Wilmington Harbor City Plan, and it's imperative that we continue the ICO in place so that we don't have an extension of these uses. I will also say that we are working very hard every day with our uh, many departments uh, to make sure that we're also uh, working on infrastructure changes and some uh, transportation changes in the district uh, with DOT, um, LAPD, uh, planning, um, and our office on a, what is a basically a truck traffic um, uh, task force. And so all of these things are important for us to continue the ICO, the task force, and to put ourselves in a position where we can adopt uh, the um, Wilmington um, and Harbor City community plan in the coming months. I appreciate your consideration of this. It's critically important to my community. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. McCosker. Anything uh, further on this? Nope. All right, anything from Department of City Planning? All right, uh, if not, then uh, it's been moved. I'll ask that you call the roll. Uh, yes, so we'll be adopting the Planning Department May 3rd report and the resolution McCosker Harris Dawson to extend the ICO for one year. Um, Mr. harris Dawson. Yes. Ms. Rodriguez. Aye. Ms. Jaroslawski. Yes. Mr. Lee. Aye. Ms. Hutt. Aye. Five members and unanimous. <coughs> All right, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. McCosker. Thank you, colleagues. Uh, congratulations. All right, um, now I want to go, uh, Mr. Mejia, to item number 14. Ms. Rodriguez, is that right? Yeah, item number 14. Yes, sir. Item 14, uh, this is a, an item that contains two appeals. Um, the first appellant is Charles Johnson, and the second appellant is Kevin Carmichael, representing the Coalition for Responsible Equitable Economic Development, and they're challenging the approval of the conditional use permit and the site plan review for the construction of a new public charter and elementary school Valor Academy Elementary, located in CD7. All right, so what we have before us is a proposal for a school that has uh, gotten approval from Department of City Planning, who will come and give us a report, then we will hear from the folks appealing that decision and uh, the applicant. So Department of City Planning, if you could join us first, followed by our, our appellants, uh, Charles Johnson, Aiden Marshall, and other representatives you might have. Good afternoon, council members. Um, this is city planning, Esther on. Item number 14 involves an appeal of the determination made by the city planning commission to approve a public charter elementary school located at 15526 and 15544 West Plummer Street. The project involves a new public charter elementary school campus with a maximum enrollment of 552 students for grades transitional kindergarten to fourth grade. Project improvements include 28 classrooms, a multi-purpose room and an existing house which will be preserved and incorporated as administrative and support space. The project would, provi would provide 49 on-site parking spaces within a surface parking lot and designated drop-off pickup area. Planning submitted a response to the appeal in a letter to the council file dated May 11, 2023. As stated in the letter to the Plum Committee, the proposed project meets all zoning criteria for the requested conditional use and site plan review entitlements. 
The project has been adequately assessed under CEQA with substantial evidence submitted into the record through the project's mitigated negative declaration, case number ENV 2022-5866-MMD. I uh, just also wanted to clarify that the applicant had submitted the health risk assessment um, at the request of planning upon filing and not in response to any public comments. So that was submitted right up front. The City Planning Commission unanimously voted to approve the project with the modified conditions related to carpooling and off-site parking facilities. Staff recommends that the Plum Committee deny the appeal and approve the project as amended during that time. This concludes my presentation and I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. And now we're here from our uh, appellants for three minutes or less. Um, Aiden Marshall or Charles Johnson. If you'll come, either of you will come to the podium. Good afternoon, Councilman. Uh, I'm Charles Johnson. The matter today is not about whether the children and parents like the school. The matter today is about two appeals filed in March 2023 asking the city to take care and order a full EIR to thoroughly examine the environmental impact that the project may bring to the young children attending staff who will work at this residence and who live nearby the proposed school. By federal state of city standards, 440 feet from a freeway is too close. City planning did not adequately respond to the issues in my appeal or did not appeal them at all. For example, city planning ignored the issue of why the pollution burden results for this area is comparable or worse than an area that has five times the, tra the traffic it did not it did not respond to the issue of Mission Hills Sepulveda project being completely left out of the traffic impact study. The applicant must include the traffic study, how the over 1,280 T that the school project will bring to the area will have an effect on traffic and the environmental. One or two lanes of traffic on Sepulveda are removed to widen the medium city planning feels that moving mature trees and a, 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 an opportunity open green space is mitigated by new trees and shrubs which will take years to mature and artificial turf. Artificial turf might be green, but it doesn't help the environment. City planning only focuses on Plummer Street as a safe street for students to walk to school, ignoring all the surrounding streets that do not have continued sidewalks. If all the students will be living on Plummer, then I guess it doesn't matter. There are too many issues not addressed or properly mitigated. No part of the project should move forward until the full ER is complete and publicly reviewed. I'd like to add that being informed weeks ago that over three foot of weeds are a fire danger. Much of the 15544 plumber remains overgrown and dry. Someone cut some of the weeds, but the rest of them are not cut. And it require, it's creating a fire hazard around the area. All right, uh, I, have on, I have on record a second Appellant? Oh. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Aiden Marshall, speaking on behalf of Appellant Creed LA. Creed LA is not a corporate association of individuals and labor organizations that includes City of Los Angeles residents. Creed LA supports sustainable development projects that comply with environmental and health and safety laws, which this project does not. Creed LA appealed the City Planning Commission's project approval because the city has not complied with CEQA. The project is a proposed school which will place hundreds of small children from TK to fourth grade, that's ages five through 10, less than 500 feet away from a major freeway on a potentially contaminated site which is surrounded by existing sources of cancer-causing toxic air contaminants. Creed LA's experts 
provided the city with substantial evidence supporting a fair argument that the project will have significant air quality, public health, and noise impacts both on students and staff, which have not been accurately disclosed. And these are not fully mitigated by the, mit uh, by the mitigation measures in the MND. The city's uh, decision to forego an environmental impact report in this circumstance is a violation of law. We submitted comments in December of 2022 uh, documenting each of these issues with qualified expert reports, and we asked the city to prepare an EIR at that time. The city has since uh, failed to prepare an EIR, and the issues raised in the appeal still have not been resolved. For example, Creed LA's air quality consultant, Dr. Clark, found a cumulative cancer risk of 413 in a million to students and staff at the project from exposure to air pollution when the school is operating. Uh, this substantially exceeds the Air District's uh, cumulative cancer threshold of 100 in a million, resulting in a significant impact. The MND's proposed air filtration systems simply do not reduce this cancer risk to less than significant levels unless we're to assume that doors and windows are closed 100% of the time and the children are, allowed to, are not allowed to play outside. Everyone knows this is not realistic for an elementary school, nor do the project's entitlements require this as a condition of approval. As a result, the cancer risk remains significant and unmitigated. Additionally, the city failed to conduct a preliminary endangerment assessment to assess on-site and off-site health risks uh, posed to students as required by the California Education Code. The city must consult with DTSC and complete a preliminary endangerment assessment before the project can be approved. The uh, project will also result in unmitigated noise and public safety impacts as demonstrated in our written appeal. We thus urge the committee to uphold our appeal and remand the project back to staff to prepare an EIR for this project. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. All right, now we'll hear from our applicant. Dear Plum Committee, my name is Sylvia Salcedo and I represent Bright Star, the applicant in connection with the CUP at Site Plan Review application for the development of Valor Elementary, a free public charter school for TK to fourth grades in the North Hills area of Los Angeles. Valor Elementary is an existing school in the community, currently in a space that is too small. The project will allow the school to serve more children and make Plummer Street its permanent location. The school incorporates the historical home on site as administrative space. On February 23rd, the CPC found that with the imposition of mitigation measures, the project will not have a significant effect on the environment and therefore adopted the MND. At CPC hearing, approximately 15 concerned community members expressed their support and close to 80 patiently waited their turn and were not able to speak due to time limitations. The robust community support continues today. As you can see, there are about 100 supporters in the chamber today. Two appeals were filed against the project challenging the CPC's adoption of the MND and requesting the preparation of an EIR. One appeal is from Creed. Creed's allegations have been repeatedly addressed by city staff and applicants environmental consultant Rincon. Rincon's letters dated February 9th and 23rd responded to Creed's concerns prior to and at the CPC hearing. The concerns were heard and found to be without merit. Creed's appeal does not raise any new issues. Nonetheless, we responded. Please see my letter dated May 10th with Rincon's attachments dated May 9th. Subsequent to my May 10th letter, Creed repeated their same allegations in their letter dated May 15th. As I mentioned in my letter dated today, no new information or evidence was presented and those claims have been fully addressed four times. The other appeal is from Charles Johnson. Some of his concerns are similar to those raised by Creed, which have been found to be without merit. The others are also without merit and fail to provide substantial evidence of any significant impacts. We also address Mr. Johnson's allegations in my same letter dated May 10th, which is part of the council file. Both appeals fail to demonstrate how CPC erred or abuses discretion. The appellants do not provide substantial evidence of any significant impacts that will be caused by the project. There is no basis in law or fact to support the appellant's claims. The MND fully complies with CEQA. 
Accordingly, we respectfully request that Plum recommend that City Council uphold the determination of CPC and deny both appeals. The Bright Star team is present to address any questions the committee may have. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. And I will ask Councilwoman Rodriguez to lead the deliberation on this item. Mr. Chair. Um, first, I want to begin by thanking the community for coming downtown. Uh, I know our council meeting went long, and so many of you have been waiting, and so I just want to say thank you for participating <coughs> in this very important process. I know it hasn't been short. Uh, this has been a deliberative process that uh, the community on both sides have been engaged in, uh, and I'm happy to say that my office was also engaged in this, helping to uh, facilitate conversations <coughs> with both parties. Uh, it was through that process that we were able to even uh, support, I was proud to be able to support the historic designation of the house on that property. And I look forward to making sure that the protections with respect to that historic designation are upheld as we continue in this, uh, in this process. <clears throat> I've had the privilege of being able to have conversations with both sides, both with students that were advocating for the school as well as the residents that had uh, voiced their clear concerns. But what this process requires us to do is look at the facts of what the property is able to be used for, and this is private property. And in consideration of those facts, uh, and, and with all of the public participation that we've had, uh, I have to consider what, where we stand in this process, both by what uh, legally the property owner is able to uh, to uh, what is allowed to do on this site, uh, which in, his, in this property owner's case has decided to engage uh, in moving forward with Bright Start Schools. Um, so within that, we have a project that has received unanimous approval from the City Planning Depart uh, Commission uh, and the Planning Department has analyzed the technical merits of the appeal. And it does, they do not support the appeal. Based on everything that has been presented in the context of this conversation, we have to make this determination based on the facts. And based on the facts that are before us, uh, we must request that we deny, I must request that we deny the appeal uh, with respect to uh, that, that is before us. And so <clears throat> what I hope, you know, we have greater goals and shared vision and goals for our community and trying to meet the needs for a community that has a multitude of objectives. I hope that we can continue to work together to help identify where we can align and help create an environment for our community and for our kids that is a shared vision for all of us to create and enjoy in our neighborhoods. And so I want to say thank you to the community of North Hills for being a part of this process. I want to thank uh, all of the, everyone that came out today to be a part of this. Um, I hope that we can continue to form continued partnerships in how we see our community build better together and move forward from this process. And I'd like to request that we deny the appeal. Excellent. So uh, thank you so much. It's been uh, moved. Uh, and seconded, Mr. Mejia, if you can call the roll on this item. Uh, yes, sir. The action being to deny the Charles Johnson appeal and the appeal submitted by Creed LA and to thereby sustain the Planning Commission's approval of the conditional use permit and the site plan review for the construction of the new public charter elementary school subject to modified conditions of approval. I will call the roll. Mr. Harris Dawson. Yes. Ms. Rodriguez. Aye. Ms. Jaroslavsky. Yes. Mr. Lee. Aye. Ms. Hutt. Yes. That's five members and unanimous, Mr. Chair. All right. All right, uh, Mr. Mejia, we'll go to uh, item one, two, four.
five, seven. Okay, so item one, sir, the committee members, it's a motion Harris-Dawson, Krikorian instructing the planning department to prepare a report with recommendations and administrative changes to the Mills Act program based on a completed assessment by the consultant Shadow Inc. and ACOM. Uh, the recommendation is to adopt that motion, sir. I can call the row or uh, individually or for all the items. If we can, ha if we can uh, take them together, I'd prefer okay. to do that. So item two, this is a categorical exemption from CEQA. It's a cultural heritage commission report to include the White Moors House as a historic cultural monument, properties located in CD8. Um, item three, we already acted on. Item four, this is a planning department report recommending to restore the mid-size medium one zoning designation for the property located at 670 Mesquit uh, in downtown. In item uh, five, this is a report from the city attorney. It's a draft ordinance to implement the annual application process uh, to enhance the social equity program and streamline the existing processes. And item seven, a report from the Cultural Heritage Commission relative to the inclusion of the Arthur Lloyd uh, and Gertrude Searcy Reese home um, located in CD 11. So for items one, the recommendation is to adopt. Recommendation for item two is to approve the inclusion. For recommendation for number for item four was read into the record at the beginning of the meeting by the planning deputy for CD 14. And item number five, the recommendation is to approve the city attorney prepare ordinance. Item seven is to approve the inclusion of the property as a historic cultural monument with the addition of the middle name Lloyd as requested by CD 11. I will call the row. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Mejia, can we add 10 and 11? 10 and 11. Yes, 10, item 10 is a cultural heritage report to include the J Risk Standard Oil Company service station as a historic cultural monument. The recommendation is to approve that designation. And item 11, this is a report uh, from city planning recommending approval of a zone change ordinance to apply hillside construction regulations to four residential neighborhoods within Northeast LA. And number two, the second recommendation is an amendment to the municipal code uh, to amend the existing hillside construction regulations, supplemental use district provisions. The recommendation for item 11 is to approve the planning commission recommendations and findings in its report dated November 30th, um, inclusive of the environmental findings to request the city attorney to prepare the ordinance to amend the existing hillside construction regulation supplemental use district provisions, proposing a new HCR supplemental use district for Northeast Los Angeles, and two, instruct uh, the planning department to prepare a final zone change ordinance in as much as amendments have been proposed at today's committee meeting by CD 14 um, to trigger the site plan review uh, at 2,500 square feet. I will call the row on all those items. Uh, Mr. Harris Dawson? Yes. Ms. Rodriguez? Aye. Ms. Yaroslavsky? Yes. Mr. Lee? Aye. Ms. Hutt? Yes. That's five members and unanimous, Mr. Chair. Excellent. Uh, so that takes us, uh, Mr. Mejia, to item number six. Yes, sir. Item six. Uh, look for it. Yes, item six. This is a communication from the mayor relative to the appointment of Mr. Christopher Torres to the South Los Angeles Area Planning Commission. Mr. Torres lives in CD8. Excellent. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, 
Mr. Torres, if you could uh, introduce yourself to the members of the committee and, and the audience. Sure. Committee Chair Harris Dawson, Vice Chair Rodriguez, Committee Members Lee Hutt and Yaroslavsky. My name is Christopher Esteban Torres and it's an honor to be considered to serve on the Area Planning Commission for South Los Angeles. I'd like to share with you a few remarks about my interest in this role. I've dedicated my career as an urban designer and landscape architect to designing a more equitable and resilient Los Angeles. Uh, simply put, I, I love this city and believe that its best days are yet to come. As a native Angelino and son of immigrants, I understand how this city has provided opportunities for past generations and its potential to welcome the next generation of Angelinos starts with providing housing that's affordable for all. I also understand the need for placekeeping. It's important that the policies that welcome development are partnered with anti-displacement initiatives. My wife and I are residents of Hyde Park in South Los Angeles and have seen firsthand the rapid change to many working communities of color. I believe that the planning decisions made today will determine the culture and diversity of Los Angeles for generations. And our defining challenge is ensuring access to housing in light of widespread income inequality, our ability to guide development to provide housing at all levels, especially the missing middle of workforce housing, is fundamental to ensuring an equitable future and a more just present for our homeless Angelinos. As a commissioner, I will advocate for projects that tackle multiple challenges simultaneously, bringing the best out of each opportunity for our community. Through my design studio, Agency Artifact, we are fortunate to be actively engaged in many of the issues this commission will face. How do we build housing at scale? How do we ensure generational community benefits, creating an economic engine through development? How do we decarbonize infrastructure, moving away from automobility and creating a robust urban ecology? I believe my experience and training allows me to connect the dots between design, community engagement, funding, innovation, and affordability. I thank you for the opportunity to speak today and consider my appointment to this position. And I look forward to serving Los Angeles in this new capacity. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, any discussion on this item? I will, uh, uh, seeing none, uh, Mr. Torres, I'll just thank you. Um, we are uh, proud of you as a resident of the 8th uh, Council District. I will uh, note from the desk here that you came in early this morning to meet with a certain South LA council member who was late uh, to council. So you've been here since uh, about 10 minutes to 10 this morning and you've hung with us all day. So uh, thank you so much for your, uh, your perseverance and your, your service to our city. Uh, and with that, uh, I'll move that we uh, move this nomination forward to the full council. I need to call the roll. Yes. Uh, yes, the roll. That's <laughs> Mr. Harris Dawson. Yes. Ms. Rodriguez. Aye. Ms. Jaroslavsky. Yes. Mr. Lee. Uh, absent. And Ms. Hutt. Aye. That's uh, four members and unanimous. Not unanimous. Thank majority. You Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Congrats. Uh, that takes us to item number nine. Uh, yes, sir. Item nine, it's a categorical assumption from CEQA report from the Cultural Heritage Commission to include the Pacific dining car uh, as a historic cultural monument. So we'll hear from uh, Department of City Planning. Yes, good afternoon, uh, Chairman Harris Dawson and members of the committee. I'm Melissa Joan with, with City Planning's Office of Historic Resources. Before you today is the recommendation from the Cultural Heritage Commission to designate designate the Pacific Dining Car, a one and two story commercial building located on the corner of 6th and Whitmer Streets in Westlake as an historic culture monument. The subject property consists of three connected volumes constructed at various dates between 1921 and 1950. The Pacific Dining Car restaurant operated continuously at the subject property from 1923 to, to 2020. The Culture Heritage Commission found that the Pacific Dining Car exemplifies significant contributions to the broad cultural, economic, or social history of the nation, state, city, or community as the long-term location of a restaurant that has played an important part in the commercial and social life of Westlake and Los Angeles as a whole. The commission specified that the period between 1921 and 1934 represents the historic significance of the subject property and that later additions and alterations do not contribute 
to the significance of the subject property, oh sorry, of the original 1921 restaurant built in the form of railway uh, dining car and do not further enhance the qualities that make the subject property significant. Uh, this concludes my report. Uh, Ken Bernstein, Lambert Giesinger, and I are here for many questions that the committee may have. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to give, uh, if there's an opportunity for an owner and an owner representative to say a few words from the podium. Uh, hi, good afternoon, uh, council members. My name is Alex DeGood uh, with the firm of Cox Castle, representing the owner. Uh, Ms. Toby Idol has a statement she's going to read. Um, I, and I'll just speak very briefly. Uh, we support the Cultural Heritage Commission recommendation. Uh, we support the designation of the property with the period of significance that the commission recommended, which uh, covers the period in which the original dining car and an original kitchen addition were constructed. Uh, the rest of the property really is, is a bunch of haphazard development that occurred after that. Much of it wasn't even part of the restaurant. It was offices and other things. Um, the, the original nomination actually asked to designate the entire property, and that would have a significantly negative impact on, on the ability to really do anything with this property. So the commission unanimously really had no difficulty reaching the conclusion that the period of significance was just for the original dining car and that kitchen addition. And again, the, we support the commission's recommendation and the designation of, of that period of significance. Hello, my name is Toby Idle. For decades, my now deceased husband and I owned the property and the Pacific Dining Car. I now own it through our family trust. The person advancing this nomination do not now, nor have they ever, had an ownership interest in the property or the restaurant, despite what their statements may have led others to believe. I live on a very modest fixed income and hope to sell the property to support myself. If the entire property is designated, I will not be able to sell it. I will have been in discussion, I have been in discussion with several affordable housing developers that are interested in acquiring the property, but they cannot commit until this matter is resolved and cannot develop it if the entire site is designated. Further, no one has come forward to offer so much as one dollar to invest in restoring the property and reopening a restaurant, a project that would cost millions of dollars and would be unlikely to succeed. Regardless, housing that provides affordable units seems to me what would be best for the community. The Cultural Heritage Commission reviewed this matter carefully and unanimously concluded that the decrepit building covering most of this site is not historic. Instead, finding that only the original dining car and kitchen addition have potential historic significance. Although it would create difficulties for any future development of the property, adopting the Cultural Heritage Commission recommendation appears to leave a path forward. Designating the entire property would result in a site that will remain abandoned for the rest of my life thank, and perhaps thank, longer. Thank you so much. That's your time. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, we have a representative from Council District 1. Hi. Thank you. Um, Helen Campbell with Council District 1 Planning Director. Our office also concurs with the Cultural Heritage Commission's recommendation to designate the Pacific Dining Car Restaurant period of significance between 1921 and 1934, a city historic cultural monument. Doing so would balance, uh, uh, would strike a balance that preserves this charming asset while developing the property to meet the very serious housing and climate related needs of today. Our office has a strong preference for this site to incorporate the Pacific Dining Car within an affordable housing development project. And according to the six cycle regional housing needs assessment, we need to accommodate a minimum of 456,643 units of housing by 2029. So after speaking with the owner and historic, um, historic preservation advocates, we welcome continued engagement as this property makes its way through the city planning process. Thank you so much. All right, so we uh, have a motion to approve this inclusion. Um, Okay, but so on these, um, this is, uh, why not? We've been here a long time. Come on, uh, 45 seconds. 
Yeah, we don't typically do this. As the applicant, I'm. Yeah, this is my, you better. I, this is, you should start. <laughs> All right. Hi, my name is Doug Lance. Um, I represent community members who believe that the that the whole property should be a historic site. Um, I have not heard about affordable housing until today. Um, I don't know what's going on on the property, but the community wants this property to be saved. Um, if people want to put affordable housing, I, I, I do that for a living, so I understand and, and uh, think that it's a great thing for them to want to do. But if it's not affordable housing, I worry that that may be a ruse, that you're being told that it'll be uh, affordable housing, but then they sell it to a developer and it's not affordable housing. So I would ask you know, that you designate the entire property as historical, and if they want to put affordable housing on there, that we can then work to remove that to put affordable housing. But I don't like this Trojan horse of affordable housing taking out this. Got it. Uh, All right, that's your time. Property. Thank you. <laughs> um, all right, so we have a motion before us, uh, Mr. Mejia, to approve the inclusion of the Pacific Dining Car located at 1300 through 1314 West 6th Street, 90017 in the list of historic cultural monuments. You call the roll? Uh, yes. Mr. Harris Dawson. Yes. Ms. Rodriguez. Aye. Ms. Yaroslavsky. Yes. Mr. D. Absent. Ms. Hunt. Excellent. Yes. Oh, four. sorry. That's I, can't, I didn't hear her say my name, sorry. Do we get Ms. Hutt? We yes. I'm, I'm a yes. Oh, all right. I heard Ms. Hutt. Okay. <laughs> That's a four members and it's adopted. Excellent. Thank you. Congratulations, everybody. That takes us to item number 12. Uh, yes, item 12, sir. It's categorical exemption from CEQA related findings. Report from the planning department relative to the approval of modifications as to the operation of an existing motel, the Magic Carpet Motor Inn, located in CD8. And an appeal has been filed by Mr. Charles E. Williams. All right, we'll hear from Department of City Planning on this. And it looks like uh, also members of the Los Angeles Police Department. Good afternoon, honorable council members. My name is Matthew Lum, city planner, and I'm joined by Jack Chong, associate zoning administrator. Item 12 pertains to an appeal to the zoning administrator's decision to impose corrective conditions to a two-story, 34-guest room with 35 parking spaces motel known as the Magic Carpet Motor Inn located at 4002-414 and 14th West Century Boulevard in the 8th Council District. On February 6, 2023, the zoning administrator issued a determination imposing necessary conditions to the operation of the Magic Carpet Motor Inn in order to mitigate adverse impacts caused by the subject business. On February 16, 2023, the operator owner appealed the entire decision of case number DIR-2022-2202 RV explaining that one, violates First Amendment Petition and Grievances Clause, Association Clause, Second Amendment, Fourth Amendment Search and Seizure Clause, Fifth Amendment Takings Clause, Fourteenth Amendment Due Process Clause and Equal Protection Clause, that there's no credible <coughs> evidence that the subject motel has or is operating in violation of any local, state, or federal law, or has operated as a public nuisance, the imposition of the conditions would result in the operator owner to close the subject motel and transfer the property to a third party developer or party. And the Los Angeles Police Department crime reports and calls for service as the uh, owner operator is entitled to the unredacted information and that a full time security guard is economically prohibited. The appeals justifications of uh, constitutional amendments cannot be substantiated, and Los Angeles Police Department submitted 230 calls for service, 25 incidents of consolidated crime analysis database, 22 incidents of consolidated crime arrest analysis database, 28 arrest and investigative reports that includes to, um, shooting, stabbing, battery, brandishing a weapon, assault with a deadly weapon, aggravated assault, larceny, criminal threats, robberies, burglary, thefts, vandalism, kidnap, rape, automobile theft, gun possession, and ex-convict uh, possession of a firearm, all of which supports the abatement action 
and the imposition of conditions, especially requiring a security guard um, is necessary to substanti substantially abate the nuisances and protect the neighborhood. It should be noted that of the serious incidents that took place at the subject motel on April 8, 2022, there was a kidnap and rape which the suspects forced the victim from an off-site location and took the victim to the subject motel and raped her. At the hearing on June 28, 2022, members of the public provided testimony that the motel is a nuisance and observed prostitution and fights. The Southeast Neighborhood Council supports imposing corrective conditions. Um, these conditions um, would bring the motel up to the standards that the city planning department would impose on motel operations. The conditions imposed on the property are standard operational conditions for businesses such as the Magic Carpet Motor Inn, and the relationship of the conditions to the findings were also included on pages uh, 34 through 47 of the determination letter. The operator and owner um, provided written justification of the appeals and has been transferred to council file number 23-0266 for your consideration. I'd also like to address uh, some of the issues that were brought up um, today by some of the speakers. Uh, the city is not taking away the property from the, the owner. Rather, we are looking to improve public safety and better the motel operations. The motel safety should not be um, exhausting LAPD resources. Um, the city does not discriminate based on identity of the business owner. The city proactively um, builds a case based on nuisance complaint and on preserving the public health and safety of the area. Um, staff's recommendation is to deny the appeal and uphold the zoning administrator's determination. This concludes my presentation and I'm available to answer any questions you may have. And Los Angeles Police Department Senior Lead Officer Tyson Hamaoka and Detective Dana Harris are here to provide testimony. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, uh, Detective and Officer. I'll call on you um, later in, the, in our deliberation. Um, so we will uh, now hear from the appellant, Mr. Williams and or his uh, representative. Yes, uh, good afternoon. Frank Weiser on behalf of the uh, Mr. Williams and A&W Development, the owner and operator of the property. I filed a uh, supplemental letter brief the other day. I sent that to Mr. Lum, and I'd like to have that part of the administrative report. And I also in, uh, attached uh, certain additional documents. Um, I raised the constitutional issues, and one of the issues was that the uh, timing of this appeal in terms of giving us the amount of time I, I raised a uh, objection under the procedural due process clause, United States Good Realty versus, uh, James Good Realty versus United States at 510 U.S. 43 in 1993 case. The right to notice an opportunity to be heard is a reasonable and meaningful right, and I don't think three to five minutes for an appeal where you're imposing uh, conditions on a property interest of this sort uh, is meaningful. And, and reasonable, so I do want to raise that point. Getting to the substance of the objections, and I think one major, major point here um, is that Mr. Williams' property has been there not only for some 30 years without incident, but there was a zoning administrator hearing back in 2019. That hearing was terminated. The proceedings were terminated, and there was finding by the zoning administrator that there was no cause to add corrective conditions. A few months later, LAPD came down and basically threatened him that if he would not voluntarily uh, agree to additional conditions, they would uh, take whatever action they had to take. That's where this proceeding started uh, during COVID, uh, in which uh, the zoning administrator, once again, upon the recommendation of, I believe, a police officer, Tyson Hamaoka, uh, made the recommendation uh, to the zoning administrator, and that's where we are here now in this appeal. As a result of that retaliatory uh, action by the police officer, very close to the first zoning administrator hearing, the police have been coming onto the property basically every day for two to three years, uh, three times a day. We gave and we submitted to Mr. Lum an attachment with 
detailed information of the time and dates of which the police have been coming on without consent in a warrant. Uh, so I do raise an issue under the First Amendment Petition and Grievance Clause. There's a case called Serrano Gascos versus Morgan, Inc. That's at 874 F. 2nd, 1310, page 1314. It's a uh, 1992 Ninth Circuit case. When you have the timing of Mr. Williams winning a zoning administrator hearing and then this action being taken so close in time, it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, how could the zoning administrator find that there was no cause for placing corrective conditions and a few months later we're back in this proceeding? Thank so you. That, that uh, concludes your time. Thank you. No, yeah, I think he, he handled it, Mr. Williams. You got it. Um, all right, uh, uh, we'll begin deliberation on this item. I'll ask uh, uh, the officer and detective to uh, come forward to the desk if you can. So uh, this uh, motel has been with us uh, for a long time. I feel like I remember when it was built uh, when I was in grade school. Um, and it's uh, gone through several iterations, including the one that we have now. Can you just give us the, chron the short chronologic, the chronology of the public safety challenges that we face? I will uh, just note for the record, I have in front of me uh, over an 18 month period, 240 uh, appearances of LAPD on the property for a variety. I mean, it's, there's literally everything, every variety of uh, violation is here. But if you can just give us that chronology, um, uh, I'd appreciate it so we can get a picture. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I uh, just want to thank the committee members for the opportunity to speak today. My, my name is Tyson Hamoka. I'm a senior lead officer with the Los Angeles Police Department. I've been a police officer for 20 years. And I've been uh, assigned to a Southeast Division Senior Lead Office for the past 10 years. So uh, part of what we do, we have two main focuses. One is to, um, to develop strategies in reducing crime in the areas that we're assigned. And also work with, partner with community stakeholders to address quality of life problems. So uh, in uh, addressing the chairman's uh, concerns, uh, the, I just wanted to cover three points today. Number one being to give you a brief historical uh, summary of how we got to the hearing. Number two, to display the data that's happened in the 11 months since the hearing on June 28th. And number three, the recommendations. So very quickly, this Magic Carpet Motel caught my attention in the, the summer of 2020. I started to observe an alarming trend of uh, calls for service crimes and arrests occurring on the property. Uh, in the fall of 2020, I reached out to the owner, Mr. Williams, and as a senior lead officer at first, I always try to, uh, if, there, if I'm noticing these trends, to reach out, try to come to some kind of collaborative effort to, main, to mitigate any kind of problems on the property. Uh, it, it was pretty apparent that we had differing views on how to best uh, tackle the problem. And uh, I made that determination by compiling the data that, uh, like I said before, with the crimes, arrests, and the uh, calls for service. And so ultimately with that data tracking led us to a zoning hearing which occurred on June 28th, 2022 and, uh, regarding to the nuisance activity at the motel. Um, it is true, listening to uh, uh, operators or the owner's uh, attorney, that there was a uh, uh, zoning investigation, but uh, this is a piece of paper I hold that was given to me by the owner back in uh, October 2020. And it stated, I'll just read in part very quickly, that from a period of January 1, 2017 to February 24, 2019, there was a drop in, in crimes, calls, and arrests. However, uh, shortly after and after the conditions were dropped or after this, the city uh, no longer had them in an investigation, that's when I noticed that the crimes, calls, and arrests just dramatically increased again. So at the hearing, uh, the data I presented was that over a two and a half year period, I showed, uh, I showed 150 calls for service, 24 arrests, and 24 crimes. And again, these, these crimes varied in nature, anything from shootings, robberies, rapes, aggravated assaults, batteries, disorderly conduct of men and women. We've also heard from community members such as uh, uh, Moses Morales, Rosales of Southeast Empowerment Council, and even a principal that works 
two blocks north of the school discussing on how the event or uh, the activity at the hotel really kind of brought down the uh, quality of life to the residents in the neighborhood. Um, also at the hearing, I heard from motel employees who really were concerned uh, about wanting to be informed about police involvement at the motel and that they wanted to work with the police department. In fact, looking at the report that was written February 6 in regards to imposition of conditions to abate nuisance, page 30 read from Mr. Weiser that he was uh, open to working with the police department would come up to come up with a resolution. So, um, and then also after that fact, it was my understanding that when we police would respond to the motel that we would have that working relationship. So in the 11th, so that was June 28th. In the months after the hearing, what did we find? Well, it was 11 months from then to now. So they've had 11 months to self-correct the problems that have been occurring at the motel. And how have they done? In my opinion, it has not been adequate. Uh, there's been multiple arrests on the property. And uh, I took the liberty of writing down some of those uh, different types of arrests. And they really started right after the uh, hearing. Uh, I'll start with uh, July 6th gun arrest, July 14th, this is all 2022, possession of narcotics and gun, uh, August 2nd, felony evading from the hotel, August 20th, a gun arrest, 12-6, 2022, uh, ex-felon with a handgun, it goes on and on. In an 11 month period, there were 12 felony arrests on the property, seven of them involved handguns. And then also to speak to the, we're talking about uh, cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department. Uh, did that happen? Out of all these arrests and investigations that I'm aware of, uh, there was no cooperation with the hotel management, the owner, uh, with the police department. Uh, even our neighborhood prosecutor, Todd Tristan, attempted to reach out to the, to the owner and, the, and his lawyer to be able to help uh, come to a collaborative or how we could tackle this problem together. However, uh, Mr. Williams never followed up with our neighborhood prosecutor. Um, the most troubling two events that I can think of as far as failing to work with the Los Angeles Police Department as they had indicated at the hearing they wanted to do was in uh, mid-2022 where the CHP had a homicide that occurred across the street. And at that time, they had information that the suspects had run across the hotel, either staying at the hotel or frequent in the motel. April 9th, last month, 2023, there was a robbery and a and shots fired at the location with one victim hit. In both instances, law enforcement went to the owner, went to the, his attorney to seek, uh, you know, video surveillance at the hotel to be able to assist with the investigation. Ultimately, uh, both departments had to end up writing search warrants to obtain uh, the video surveillance from. So, in my opinion, there hasn't been a collaborative effort. So, my recommendations are simple: that all conditions are enforced as written. Just with one exception, there is one provision, item 24, which states that a rod iron entrance gate shall be installed located across Century Boulevard. I would like to, if possible, include that some type of pedestrian access is, is, uh, is included in that. And uh, by, uh, there's actually two reasons for that, because a rod iron gate put up in the front with no immediate access, would, it would certainly limit the response time in the motel in the event of an injury, i.e. the April uh, robbery and shooting that occurred in the motel. And number two, also many of the arrests occur from self-initiated actions by the police officers. And so access into the property is essential, especially when you're dealing with armed suspects. Um, So the data is irrefutable. The, the Magic Carpet Motel, they've had the opportunity to mitigate the problem since June 2022 just, and, and haven't done so. They refuse to work with the police department on preventive measures or cooperate with investigations that are attempting to decrease incidents of crime on their property. At this point, I can only deduce that, that they're incapable of, of correcting the problem themselves. Therefore, I urge this committee to uphold all the conditions as written with the exception of the aforementioned in, in uh, item number 24. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to ask the uh, planning department to come back up uh, to see if the two uh, amendments that uh, were suggested are feasible uh, or if we need to come back to those at a later date. 
Hi, Honorable <coughs> Plum Chair. This is Jack Chandler, Zone Administrator. Uh, in regards to the uh, condition number 24, that condition uh, for the Iron Gate, that condition is uh, aimed at the uh, public, members of the public, not the LAPD. On page number seven, condition number 31, uh, the property owner and operator shall sign a trespass arrest authorization form with LAPD. So at any time, LAPD is able to access the site. Got it. So okay. the gate, uh, I, want, I want to assure LAPD that uh, the gate condition is not aimed at the department. It's aimed at the, uh, the members of the public. Okay. Yeah. So, so we'll note that, um, and, and we'll go from there in the interest of time. Any discussion, members, on this item? Ms. Yeah, Rodriguez. I, I just, I, I want to better understand your response on the, on the gate, because uh, I, w I wanted some clarity, because what the officer was raising in terms of accessibility, right, is that what you were raising? Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. ma'am. So I recognize what you're talking about. I just wanted to make sure we're on the same, we're, we're kind of having alignment the in same the same conversation. conversation. Yeah. Cause it didn't seem like you guys were in alignment. So it, it wasn't with respect to whether or not it was, you know, how it was being directed. It's more so about the accessibility for LAPD in order to do the enforcement that they might perhaps need, you know, subsequently need to continue to provide. And so that's, I just want to make sure what, uh, if, if you could address again what your concerns were in terms of if this gate goes up in this, as part of this condition, uh, what is your concern about your ability to access the property for the enforcement that might be required? Okay, yes ma'am. So my concern is that the police being able to come onto the property in the scope of, uh, you have to understand that when officers, I was in the field for many years, when we're doing enforcement action, especially in high crime areas, uh, being able to have immediate access is key. So the one part that I uh, take pause on is that if officers are going to the location and if there are suspects inside that are armed on the property, uh, seconds count. You know, and in being able to have something that's very quick, like the uh, you know, first thing I thought of was like a pedestrian gate to have a, like a key access through, in addition to this, you know, the sliding mechanical gate if they wanted to have. Would, uh, would give us that opportunity to be in there. Because in real life, if you're waiting outside a gate for two minutes for an operator or someone to open the, uh, the gate up, the opportunity is lost. Because a lot of times uh, in these reports where officers are catching people in the parking lot with guns or narcotics or what have you, um, if they were allowed an extra minute or two in that parking lot knowing the police are outside, they're gonna secrete themselves and be gone. So, so thank you. So, so we we need to amend amend this so that okay. it is done in a way where um, LAPD has access. I, the the zone administrator would uh, re uh, request um, LAPD officer for a, a slight clarification. Would LAPD officer um, prefer a iron gate at entrance uh, because we can we can um, uh, delete this condition or amend the condition to include a pedestrian gate. It sounds like he wants a pedestrian gate that LAPD has access okay. to. Yes, sir. So, okay. that, so, so if, if, that if that amendment is uh, feasible, that's the amendment I'll put forward. Okay. So we can amend the language to say that an iron gate entrance, a iron, uh, raw iron entrance gate, uh, along with the uh, pedestrian gate for LAPD access shall be installed. Got it, okay. Right? So, uh, so, Ms. Rodriguez is making that amendment. I'll second it. <laughs> um, so, uh, so that item, that item's uh, amendment. Uh, just uh, really quickly, because uh, we're running very, very short on time, we run over time. Um, I want to thank uh, the members of the Los Angeles Police Department, as well as um, our uh, planning staff and zoning administrator, and the folks who've who've come here. Um, it, please, uh, uh, again, it was stated by the planning department, I want you all to hear it from me as the council member. This action does not take the property away from Mr. Williams. It does not even restrict his ability to run a motel. It, it will, Magic Carpet can still be a motel. It's just a motel that has to operate with certain conditions. One of them, which seems to be the most controversial one, is a security guard. Nobody has the right to op operate a business. I don't care if you own the land. I don't care how respected a business person you are, as Mr. Williams is. With this 
kind of uh, rap sheet and this type of activity going on in the neighborhood. We're, we're, we're going to, we're going to, you can't, you can't shout out, no, no, your time to talk is passed. So, so we're going to, we're going to uh, move this item. Mr. Mejia, I'll ask that you call the roll. So to be clear, the appeal is denied and we're going to sustain the planning department recommendation adopt environmental clearance um, and sustain the recommendations of the zoning administrator as to the imposition of corrective conditions with the amendments, um, I believe Mr. Chang said, to conditions 24 and 31. No? no? To whatever the number of the conditions were to, to provide 24. access I think it's 24. This you is the zoning administrator, Jack Chan. It's only condition number 24. Oh, okay, only yeah. condition 24. Yes. Right. Correct. To add, go ahead. Add yes. a phrase. Okay, so the condition states a, our, a raw iron entrance gate. Then add with a pedestrian gate for LAPD access. That's it. Okay, so as Mr. Jack Chang stated, that condition, condition 24, will be modified as such. Thank you. I will call the row. Um, Mr. Harris Dawson. Yes. Ms. Rodriguez. Aye. Ms. Jaroslavsky. Yes. Mr. Lee absent. Ms. Hutt. Yes. That's four members and that's adopted. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. That takes us to item number 13. Item 13, sir. It's categorical exemption from CEQA. The related findings, a report from the Planning Commission recommending approval of the environmental clearance for a transit-oriented communities project and an appeal filed by Supporters Alliance for Environmental Responsibility. This is to, for the construction of a mixed-use building with 90 units and nine units reserved for extremely low-income households. Project is situated in CD10. Department of City Planning. All right, thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, good evening, honorable council members. My name is Moore Song, planning staff with LD City Planning. Uh, again, this item before us now uh, for council file 23-0343 is an appeal of the environmental clearance for a proposed six-story uh, mixed-use residential and commercial building with 90 residential units, um, including nine units reserved for extremely low-income uh, households. Um, the project's environmental clearance is a Class 32 categorical exemption, uh, which is specifically designed for uh, urban infill type projects uh, such as this project. The appeal today is being filed by the Lozo Drury Law Firm on behalf of the Supporters Alliance for Environmental Responsibility, or SAFER. Um, SAFER also appealed the initial director's determination to approve this project um, pursuant to the city's transit-oriented communities, or TOC, program. Uh, that appeal involved a variety of uh, potential environmental impact concerns, including air quality, hazardous waste, and energy impacts. Uh, the city did evaluate that initial appeal and concluded that there is no substantial evidence of any uh, potential significant environmental impacts, and the City Planning Commission did deny that appeal. Uh, however, SAFER has submitted this appeal before us today, um, which brings, brings us here today, uh, with the exact same points as the first appeal. Uh, as such, city planning continues to maintain and that uh, the project's environmental analysis was adequately analyzed in the Class 32 categorical exemption and that there is no merit to this appeal um, as before. I will also note that the applicant uh, the applicant's environmental consultant did submit an updated Class 32 categorical exemption document, which is a part of the council file before you. Um, this update incorporates minor changes to some background information and uh, updates some references, but uh, everything else remains valid, and therefore the document continues to adequately analyze the project's environmental impacts. Uh, the applicant's environmental consultant has also submitted a just additional justification documents to the council file, which explains in greater detail why the appeal does not constitute any substantial evidence of any deficiencies in the Class 32 categorical exemption. So as such, uh, city planning believes that the project will be beneficial and provide much needed housing for the community uh, and that there is no merit to the appeal and therefore recommends denial of the appeal before you. Uh, I am available for any questions that you may have and thank you very much for your time. 
Thank you so much. Now we'll hear from our appellant or their representative for three minutes. Come on forward. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Davison and uh, the city council members. My name's Joseph Gonzalez. I'm an attorney. I represent Richard Drury and Safer. Um, first, uh, what we are requesting is that the uh, engineers with the baseline environmental consulting reviewed uh, the project and found that the city failed to conduct a health risk assessment um, or an HRA to evaluate the health impacts from the project's emissions of diesel particulate matter or DPM. DPM is a known human carcinogen which can cause severe health effects with even limited amounts of exposure. Additionally, the city uh, um, the city had conducted general generalized air quality analysis for the project but did not prepare a health risk assessment to specifically evaluate the effect of the project's uh, DPM emissions on human health. Therefore, the city has failed to provide substantial evidence showing that the project's air emissions will not have significant uh, effects on health of nearby sensitive receptors. Next, the baseline, baseline found that the project failed to adequately evaluate the project's greenhouse uh, gases uh, gas emissions or GHG impacts um, that was done by uh, two experts and they are both in exhibit A and B. Lastly, Safer's indoor air quality expert found an excess cancer risk resulting from the use of formaldehyde in indoor uh, building materials throughout the project. Without mitigation, off-gassing or vapor intrusion as it's known formaldehyde uh, will result in excessive cancer risk to future residents of 120 uh, persons per million, which is 12 times greater uh, than the South Coast SCACMED Air Quality Management District's health risk threshold of 10 to the minus 6 or 1 per million. The courts have clearly held that exceedances of established district thresholds are significant air quality impacts, must properly be analyzed and um, mitigated. The response to the comments also incorrectly states that this is not a significant impact because the project will comply with the applicable building materials. However, Mr. Offerson's calculations assumed compliance with applicable regulations and nonetheless found that the project would result in significant indoor air quality impact. For the foregoing reasons, we requested Thank you. Now we're here from our Thank you. applicant. Good evening, honorable commissioners. Andrew Brady of the DLA paper firm on behalf of the project applicant. Uh, we fully concur with the conclusion of the planning department. Uh, we know you've seen these exact same arguments before. Uh, they've been raised again and again and again. Uh, they're running these things off an assembly line. Uh, here, they didn't even bother to reflect the true project. The analysis that they did uh, reflects a project site that's four times bigger than this project site, overstates the analysis. Their claims regarding diesel particulate matter are, are completely fantastical. Uh, no, there's no requirement here to conduct a health risk assessment. And here, under the applicable legal test, which is the substantial evidence test, they're required to lay out the substantial evidence that the city relies on and show why it's lacking. They cannot prepare their own separate reports and submit those and call those substantial evidence. The city gets to rely on the substantial evidence uh, that it chooses. Here, that substantial evidence was presented in the form of expert reports. Uh, the appellant has completely failed to address those. Uh, complete responses have been made by the city planning department. Complete responses have been made by the uh, 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 expert consultants of the developer here. No further response has been made by the appellant here. They simply repeat the same tired arguments that you've heard again and again about 
diesel particulate matter from a residential project. This is a 90 unit residential project. The claim that it produces uh, excessive amounts of diesel particulate matter is nonsensical. Uh, there's no regulation on earth that requires a project such as this to conduct a health risk assessment that has been roundly rejected by the South Coast Air Quality Management District. Uh, time and time again, uh, they, pre they prepare these completely false, overstated cookie cutter analyses that don't even actually reflect the true project here. These are meritless arguments uh, presented, uh, and I, I think fair to say that, you know, somewhat cynically, just this has been, you know, I've been up this is maybe the 10th time I've been before a commissioner board addressing these identical arguments. Um, I would hope that this would come to an end at some point in the not too distant future. Uh, um, and we, we fully concur with the planning department. There's nothing new that's been addressed here. Uh, all of these arguments have been addressed. They're completely meritless and this appeal should be denied. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Ms. Hutt. Hi. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this appeal is seen as frivolous and unsustainable for the development. Um, this is the second appeal, and they use the exact same justification as for when the director of planning issued the original determination. No new information was received that would sus substantiate the claims of grievance by the appellant. So um, I ask that a yes vote be approved by this um, committee to deny the appeal. Thank you. Thank you. It's been moved. <coughs> Seconded. Please call the roll. Uh, yes. So that appeal has been denied, and uh, we're sustaining the underlying action of the Planning Commission to approve the environmental clearance for the project. Mr. Harris Dawson. Yes. Ms. Rodriguez. Aye. Ms. Jaroslavsky. Yes. Mr. Lee absent, Ms. Hutt. Yes. Thank you. Uh, that's four members of the carry. Excellent. Can you confirm that concludes our business for today? It Finally. Does. Excellent. We're adjourned. Thank you so much. Finally, leave the